since long human being whether their societal or political aspects or individual uh, that facets that had been revolved around the religion the religion wherein the certain set of practices considered as a sacred and that also seen as bridge between person and divinity wherein pilgrimage or tirth yatra is deemed as one of that practice but at the same time then the evolution of different societies and human intellect that came into for then there also emerged the that very idea of liberal perspectives with the advent of this liberal liberal perspectives the emergence of new idea came in that is named as or termed as the tourism or touring in today's dis, uh, discussion session the topic what we are going to deal with about the tugwa between this idea of pilgrimage and the concept of tourism or to traveling so let us see what the today's session that we are going to deal in this what to know current development session we can see the diagrams or photographs that very much giving the hint about the uh, the the point what we are going to have today in the spotlight the outcry against government decision to promote parasnath parvat as part of ecotourism so we have seen a lot of un cry and protest are going on still in our country in different parts that is because of the this particular notification of ecotourism tagging of this parasnath parvat so what uh, this uh, the thing that is revolving around in the news headlines so the brief about jainism because this is very much uh, related to the jains and their belief system the synopsis about jainism the jain that derives from the term jina that means the conqueror that is in hindi we say the jitendra so one who attained the or one who get rid of the sensual desires and pleasures so that very person or that very individual or that soul is termed as a jain the important term is tirthankar that the great learned man or enlightened human being or that is also deemed as incarnation of god who shows the right way to attain the moksha or salvation that moksha from the the death recycling of birth and death then kavalya is a uh, something which uh, enlightenment or attaining in the enlightenment or attaining a learned learned uh, brains so nirgrantha one who free from bonds so these are the some terms those are very important as per as jainism or the genesis of jainism is uh, that concern the it is it it is of the belief that jainism has been since uh, the 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 development or evolution of the human so it existence since a million as per the jain text at the same time if we talk about uh, the whole proponent or exponents of these great tirthankaras of jains jainism there are about uh, there are only 24 tirthankaras first was bhagwan rishabdev ji or adinath but these 22 tirthankaras are considered as the traditional 
Tirthankaras. That means they are their evidences or their uh, their any explanation or any idea about their places, their residence or their birth is something a traditional or mythological. But 23rd and 24th Tirthankaras, those are they there are some historical evidences as well. So that is there. Uh, we cons uh, in Jainism, Vasanaji and Mahavir Swamiji, Bhagwan Mahavir Swamiji, 23rd and 24th considered as the uh, the Tirthankaras among 24, the whole. So these are uh, the 24 Tirthankaras. The the idea about uh, the the whole uh, root of Jainism that. Uh, revolve around the means to attain or means to de-orbit from cycle of rebirth. So, this is something uh, the attaining moksha uh, is something uh, core of the Jainism and three ratnas are considered, three jewels or three ratnas considered as the, the two means to attain this salvation or uh, that uh, get uh, or that de-orbited from this uh, cycle of rebirth. So, right faith, right knowledge and right conduct. So, in, uh, in the specific terminology, uh, right faith is something, samyak, darshan, then samyak, right knowledge samyak, Gyan and right conduct is Samyak Saritra Saritra. So, this is uh, these are the three Ratnas of Jainism and five woes or five principles of Jainism are Ahimsa, non violence. Satya is truth, asti that is non stealing or not to receive anything which was uh, not voluntarily given. Okay. And the uh, fourth, aparigraha that is non possession, and brahmacharya the celibacy or uh, that is uh, ascetic life, uh, leading a ascetic life. So these four uh, were according to the Jain text. Uh, given by the 23rd Tirthankara, uh, Parashwanathji, Parashwanathji and this edition of Brahmacharya celibacy is given by 24th Tirthankara, Mahavira, Bhagavan Mahavira. So, these are the difference or the ed, he added that fifth uh, that brahmacharya uh, idea of living now what is the matter of concern so this is what we are going uh, to actually the today's session is all about the matter of concern here the parasnath hill uh, which is situated uh, in the Jhar state of jharkhand the eastern indian part the state where uh, here we can say in the Giridi district of Jharkhand. The Parashnath Hill Sanctuary uh, that is already a sanctuary declared that sanctuary that generally under the Wildlife Protection Act. Nineteen seventy two, and any sanctuary can be declared by uh, by the notification by the state or central government. So this is a brief about a sanctuary as per our legislative provisions in country. At the same time, uh, the Parasnath Hill is one uh, with the height of uh, that altitude of about that peak 
the highest peak of Parsanath that is Samed Sikharji, uh, the highest peak that is about 1350 meter and this is the highest in the Jharkhand. So, this part of northern part of Jharkhand, where uh, this entire part we know the Chotanagpur plateau region, this, this is part of Chotanagpur, but it is a Hazaribagh plateau. So, this is, uh, uh, this is something uh, uh, general idea of geography about the Jharkhand. So, these part are the uh, highest part of Jharkhand that is also uh, that also uh, comprises the Samet Sikharji that is 1350 meters. So, this is brief. At the same time, Parasnath hill is a place according to the Jain text. Uh, the 20 of 24 Trindankaras, Trindankaras, those attain the salvation in the hill of Parsana. So, uh, so it, it suggests that is a one of the highest or utmost sacred places among the Jains. Okay. Marching ahead. Now, wh why it uh, came into the limelight, why it become a, uh, the, this decision of government that become a bone of contention. Uh, in the year 2019, when government of Jaka notified the religious and historical sites as a tourism center. So, in that year, in that under that gazette notification that recommended under the state tourism development committee, uh, the body uh, which uh, suggested or recommended the some sites, uh, they, they of the view to boost the tourism in the state and hence the religious sites as well as historical sites or historically significant sites both they put under the tourism sites means commonality I mean both included in the under the one head that is something is religious or historical or religious important or religiously important tourist sites. So, this is something uh, began in the year 2019, but at the same time that particular notification were under the check because uh, they sent to the because this hill is forms the Parasnath hill forms the sanctuary. So, therefore, they required a approval of Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change that is a central government unit or central government uh, body, government of India. So, therefore, they sent their proposal, a state, the state of Jharkhand sent the proposal to the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and along with the consultation with Ministry of Tourism. they are supposed to clear the this proposal to declare this particular site, I mean Parasnath Hill Sanctuary as an ecotourism site. So, that is under the uh, pending uh, and the, that this hill is yet to be declared as e eco sensitive zone, but at the same time, government of India notified hill as an eco-sensitive zone, but at the same time that particular uh, declaration of this uh, eco-sensitive zone area, the, this hill is under the uh, obviously fierce scrutiny of, uh, from the giant community. At the same time, uh, in the uh, 2020, this year itself, in the July, 
government of Jharkhand could provide the tourism policy of Jharkhand. And in this uh, tourism policy, they also reiterated the idea of uh, promoting the Parasanath Hill as a tourist destination. So, a religious tourist destination. So, obviously, that uh, uh, in whole or entirety that attracted the uh, obviously the outcry and uh, red face of uh, Jainism, uh, Jainese. So, obviously, that is one of the reason behind the uh, ongoing protest. At the same time, the guiding history. No, we can uh, delve back or navigate back to our history, the medieval era when uh, the, the Badsha Akbar, the King Akbar, uh, in year 1592, this is very interesting uh, story or in, interesting event. Then he put forwarded or he granted the second Farman to Hirvijay ji. Suri, one of the representative, Hirvijaya, Hirvijaya ji Suri, he was a representative of Jankan. And that time, uh, the Farman that dated the 37th year of reign of Akbar, uh, the 37th year, that means 1592, when Mara, uh, that uh, the King Akbar granted the Farman and that that requested all the Jagirs, the Jagir and and the, all the administrators of his kingdom or empire. And they asked, he asked, according, as per the Farman, that Farman asked the all the administrators and uh, the province governors of uh, that uh, Mughal Empire, and that uh, he suggested them that to give all the rights to this Samet Sikhar or Parashanath in Bengal together with all the temples, courtiers below these hills. That means that uh, that given to the, this is the place for pilgrimage of the Jain Swetambar community. So, that written, uh, this uh, Furman is still existed today uh, and uh, from where we can get the idea about that how Akbar was also a tolerant and uh, his attitude and his uh, policies were very much of the tolerance as well as for the, uh, he is also promoting the uh, that uh, the harmony, religious harmony among different communities. So, uh, that is something uh, very important that uh, even the time of Akbar, he also uh, grant the autonomy to the Jain community to uh, preserve and maintain this uh, sacred pa Parasnath hill. Uh, and he give uh, that grant to the Swetambar community's representative, Hirvijaya ji in 1592. So, this is very interesting. Now, uh, the same time, the eco-sensitive zone. So, we have seen that uh, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change uh, that uh, uh, supposed to uh, approve the proposal of uh, that ecotourism uh, destination to, uh, to the Parasanath Hill. The eco-sensitive zone is something which is seen as a shock observer. Shock observer means Suppose this is the core zone where wildlife, flora and fauna are uh, very sensitive or in the rich or abundance. So, it extends up to 10 kilometers. So, there is a provision up to 10 kilometer any, suppose this is sanctuary, core zone, sanctuary or national park. And the eco-sensitive zone can be declared up to the 10 kilometers. So, it, it is something a shock observer. So, it is something uh, to prevent uh, the ecological disturbance, to prevent any ecological damage or disturbance to flora and fauna of these protected areas. So, eco-sensitive zone is very important. Sometimes it is also uh, 
synonymously used as buffer zone. So, these are the very important and this eco sensitive zone uh, the any activities those are to be permitted or uh, not permitted that uh, list that governed by the wildlife protection act of 1972 okay one of the pioneer legislation to protect the wildlife in india and uh, epa environmental protection act 1986 gives or that best the power power and functioning autonomy or decision making to the body those are considered for the or those are supposed to uh, know supervise or monitor this particular area so the any penal provisions any uh, powering provisions are under the environmental protection act this is very important 1986 upsc or civil services uh, they are frequently or in, invariably we can say are asking questions from these uh, important legislation environmental legislation in country uh, those are in uh, in having a greater say for the protection environment and the 1972 are uh, this particular act is only to list out the activities those are permissible or not permissible so, what are the mandates under ECG and these are the major areas where uh, any eco sensitive zone is subjected to. The first of all is zonal master plan. So, there is a need to uh, design and uh, you know frame the blueprint of entire uh, developmental or master plan how to protect, uh, where to protect and uh, these are everything has to be prepared or that well established before or while declaring any uh, zone as an eco sensitive zone. Second is uh, tourism, uh, whether tourism is allowed or up to what extent that can be allowed that is also uh, need a consideration while declaring this ESZ, natural heritage whatever the uh, any rock formations, any springs, any forests, these or any flora or fauna these are the natural heritage ground water is also uh, given a due consideration the level water table of the area natural springs or catchment areas uh, given a special consideration industrial units any industrial units whether that is uh, just hotel or tourism sector or any kind of like uh, uh, others like querying and minings are completely prohibited. So, these are the some uh, special provisions there. Traffic or any traffic or any vehicle movement is prohibited here. No plastic zone, monitoring committee as per the EPA 1986 uh, to uh, supervise and to uh, superintendence of everything that is to be uh, vested with this monitoring committee. Three, uh, those are also important. Uh, not to uh, not to fail or not to you know even every rights uh, there uh, like forest right acts whether that tree can be taken away or not everything is regulated here solid waste uh, or hill slope protections this is for the any developmental activity whether road construction or any uh, bridge or any important uh, infrastructure projects that is a need to be given a due consideration before approval any approval or permission so these are the various aspects or dimensions uh, that come into play while declaring any area eco sensitive zone now ground of dissonance why uh, what are the uh, uh, arguments uh, by the uh, jain community in particular uh, First of all, the Jainese views that sacred hill may be defiled by the tourism plants. So they are, that is the one of the most uh, prime most concern. And second, that uh, like uh, many a times, what happened that uh, this uh, Jain hill uh, that is to be uh, no to visit the Samet Sikharji by the barefoot. If suppose any tourist come in for the trekking or uh, hiking, they may come wearing a shoe or sandals. 
So, this is something a contrary to the sentiment of Jain communities because they uh, believe that these hills where 20 Trintrankas out of 24 attain the salvation. So, it the this place should be visited with the barefoot. So, there, therefore, they they view their view at that that sacred hill may be defiled by the tourism plants. Second is the Jain community is demanding holy status to hill. So, this is uh, holy status rather uh, declaring a ecos uh, that eco sensitive zone they are view they are of the view that there it should be declared as a eco tirthasthan or eco pilgrimage center rather a eco sensitive zone they they are demanding for this this is important and uh, this is both are the uh, same arguments and second, they are also demanding for to denotify the Parasnath Hill as circuit as a ESZ or ecosensitive zone. So this is uh, the their demand. And the another important uh, uh, argument or another important uh, area of uh, this ongoing uh, protest, wherein National Commission for Minorities also intervened into. So National Commission for Minorities they uh, took the cognizance uh, of this particular issue and they approached to the chief secretary of Jharkhand government and uh, this national commission for minorities we all know that this body uh, formed under the uh, minorities national minorities act 1992 so this is the statutory body statutory body and uh, this, this particular body is responsible to uh, ensure the welfare measures as well as the, uh, the concerns those are uh, 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 no, subjected to these uh, particular communities the six communities where in India those are declared as uh, given the status of minorities that, that is Buddhism, Jainism, Zoroastrian, Muslims Christian and Sikh, Sikh, Sikhism, uh, the populace, those communities are given the minority status. So, the, this National Commission for Minorities that governs the affairs of minorities' interest in India. So, this uh, body also came into play, they intervened the matter, and this is some, uh, it's a quasi judicial body. So, therefore, the matter is slated to hold a hearing on the January 17. So, January 17 is yet to come. So, this body will also uh, obviously upon some uh, judgment that may be uh, in the interest of uh, the Jain communities. So, this is all about that. Now, uh, the before concluding this session, uh, this, this issue is going. So, what could be the way forward? Uh, maybe answer lies in our uh, law of the land that may be the in constitution where the freedom of religion is also given a uh, fundamental right status. So, it is a very uh, part and parcel of individual right and communities to preserve, to maintain their uh, their places, their uh, to manage their affairs, religious affairs and individual uh, uh, way of uh, faith or belief system. But at the same time, our uh, directive principle of state policy and our fundamental duties, those are also uh, in these uh, part of constitution that also talks about the conservation of uh, environment as well as uh, uh, other part ecological uh, aspects that need to be uh, given a considered a great uh, attention we that part is is sensitive because in in the part of uh, jharkhand because jharkhand is one of the uh, countries leading mining uh, area or zone which uh, no about uh, to hold about uh, nearly 40 percent of uh, mineral wealth so jharkhand so that is that state is very much uh, i'll not say the vulnerable but the state is very much uh, 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 there is a prospectus uh, prospect of mining operations or querying. so 
so it may be any hill may be subject to any mine, mining inquiry so at the same time it is a duty of government and probably every stakeholder of this country to safeguard that uh, any ecological uh, uh, diverse or sensitive areas from this mining operations or any illegal activities so these uh, our developments need a uh, very due consideration or care uh, while uh, uh, no talking about or um, concerning about any uh, mining operations or developmental uh, or any infrastructure projects so this is important that uh, religious uh, uh, that uh, aspects as well as our uh, developmental and environmental aspects uh, that all needs a due consideration a due vetage and uh, they need a, uh, of obviously a golden mean path so that is what i can or i may uh, uh propon no say something about now before concluding the the idea or uh, the jain principles uh, as per the first truth of jainism that uh, quotes i quote that non injury to all living being is the only religion so message is very clear and loud that jainism is a religion that concerns about every living being not just human so that uh, is something a beautiful part or beautiful uh, idea of this religion that uh, world to be given or world to be conveyed and this may be uh, certainly give a hint to us all of humanity that golden mean path or concerning having a concern for every living being is a need of our that is a high time that we need to care for have a care for every individual and every organism in this earth thank you thank you for being with me